Hey, remember that iWater and check you wrote to the avionics shop for that ADSB installation so you could fly in ADSB mandate airspace? Good to go, last long time, right? Maybe not. I'm here with Cy Pinkert, flies a uh, turbocharged Cessna 310 and a 737 at work. And uh, so what happened now, Cy? You've got this 310, you've been flying around for a year or so. It's loaded with the latest uh, and greatest Garmin gear, including a uh, uh, mandate compliant ADSB system. You've been flying the thing IFR, VFR through all kinds of airspace. And uh, one day you go uh, uh, soaring through the Denver Class B airspace and the uh, controller tells you you got no ADS-B. It turns out your airplane is uh, on the FAA uh, red list as uh, being uh, a no services uh, aircraft. So it turns out it wasn't working and it may not have been working for a year. So what happened here? Yeah, so that's pretty much how it went. Um, I'm based right underneath the Denver Bravo at the Rocky Mountain Metro Airport. So that's uh, air, uh, ADS-B required airspace. Um, I just went up for a quick exercise flight with Amelia and uh, we just flying around the area and all of a sudden ATC says, hey, uh, we don't have any ADSB information on you. Um, yeah, and I've flown across the country many, many times and no idea what had happened. Uh, it was the first time I'd heard of it. So I went home kind of in a panic mode of how much is this going to cost because nothing's cheap on an airplane. Um, did some research found out there's this public ADSB performance report you can pull. Um, so I went online, I pulled that, and I anxiously waited for the whole two minutes it took to get to my email. And uh, there was a big, big red box on it that said my SIL level, which is source integrity level, was failing at 100%. Um, it's called avionics. Uh, turns out it's a quick fix for at least my transponder setup, and it seems like for most of them, it was just a setting issue. Um, and Talking with Garmin, the FAA, and uh, the avionics shop, there's some ideas that might not be level across all three of those, but uh, it could just be that the the device was sent out for repair, and it came back with the default setting, and that setting is not correct for ADS-B. Um, I was also advised that in mind when we pulled the battery for annual, that that probably that that could have been what happened and it just defaulted back to the default settings yeah for the viewers that, that really don't know what what goes into an avionics installation in particular an adsb install uh you've got a garmin adsb transponder it's got adsb out so when the installer puts it in there's a pretty critical installation configuration that needs to be entered into the box so it outputs the right data for your airplane in a shop I should have the test equipment to check the ADSB, but um, the question I have is: you know, you flow this airplane all over the place in all kinds of airspace for all that time. Why hasn't why hasn't anybody spoken up until now? You know, I'm fortunate I get to work with uh, air traffic controllers in my other job, um, and that screen gets pretty cluttered, especially in these areas that you do need uh, that are defined as ADSB airspace requ uh, required. Um, and so a lot of the controllers toggle that switch off just to help declutter their screen a little bit because the standard screen setup is quite busy already. And then you throw in all the ADSB information, it just gets really cluttered really quick. So half, most of them nowadays just turn it off and they don't even worry about it. They just get a little symbol next to your call sign that tells them whether your ADSB is working or not. So, but five years into this ADSB output mandate. People flying around in ADSB airspace with either equipment that doesn't work or maybe not even having any equipment at all. Do you think there's a, a more hard nose approach coming down? I I think in the future we will. Um, timeline is definitely up for debate. Um, but my, in my situation, I called the FAA folks with the ADSB out requirements, and I fessed up to them real quick. Filed my NASA report, did all that, and was pretty honest with them. And they opened up quite a bit to me. And uh, they said currently they're not doing enforcement actions, but we know currently just means today. Um, but yeah, as things progress, I think uh, you will see things coming down the, the pipeline. So, and this could help, the whole purpose of uh, zooming up with you here today is to help other people that may be, may be faced with a similar dilemma. So if, especially if you have to fly through ADSB airspace, what do you do? 
Yeah, so there's a uh, deviation flight request you can put um, put in information. It's pretty much like fi uh, filing a flight plan. Uh, you just put all, all the information in on the FAA ADAPT website. Uh, you've got to do it no more than 24 hours before your planned departure time and no sooner than 30 minutes before. Um, it generates uh, just a report that you're going flying and that you know that you're not ADSB compliant and it puts the information out there. I don't think the controllers even, uh, I'm almost positive the controllers have no idea that you did this. It's just a paperwork deal for the FAA. Uh, but yeah, you go file that and it's good for 30 minutes before to two hours after your planned departure time. And that keeps you in the, the good graces with the FAA and you, you're good to go fly. Uh, they just advised me, don't do it all the time um, and just keep flying without fixing the ADSB. Go ahead and get it fixed. Um, so once you go to the shop, you, uh, you, you get your issue resolved. It's kind of not over yet. You've got to continue filing these deviation flights through the ADAPT website until you get removed off of the uh, INSAL list. And that's where I found myself. Um, and that means they tried to contact me. I never got a phone call, never got a letter in the mail. And so they just put the aircraft on this INSAL list. And there was a big red tag across the top that said aircraft is on no services list. So that's kind of what freaked me out the most. Um, but after that, um, it takes about, they, the FAA meets with the, the people who manage this list about once a month. And then it takes about two weeks after they do the meeting to take you off the list. So there's a period of time where you do have to file your deviation flight every single time, even though the issue is resolved. Because you're eight, basically when you get on that list, your ADSB information is locked out and it will not transmit even if it is working correctly. So the, the point here, uh, mm -hmm. with a couple of points to the story, you know, assuming that the ADSB output worked from the time it was installed, but you might be in a situation where the transponder needs to get sent out for repair uh, and maybe a loaner gets put in uh, or it goes back to the factory, it gets fixed, but the software settings, all the configuration is set back to default. And that means the data that was entered before it was sent out may be all gone. So you have to rely on the shop to uh, you know, reprogram this thing before they turn you loose. But in your case, you had a good suggestion. Uh, anytime the thing is removed or maybe even have to have major work done uh, is to uh, just get one of these uh, performance reports. It's easy to do. This way you know that your system is working. Is that kind of what you believe? Yeah. You know, I think what I'm going to do is every quarter, I'm just going to pull a performance report. It takes less than five minutes to do. Um, and that way I know that I'm all taken care of. Uh, and I found out with the FAA, a fun little tip with this uh, ADSB out is the uh, controllers might not even tell you that you don't have your ADSB out working but they can file a report to the FAA. And so they just send an email to a email address. It goes up to these folks up in Alaska, and then they'll send out letters to you about your ADSB and you'll never have gotten any notification from the controller at all. So mm. just to kind of solve that issue and get ahead of it, I think just anytime you go in for maintenance or if you don't fly super regularly, just pull the report super easy and it'll keep you out of trouble also worth mentioning is if you're buying a used airplane and you know you want to you should look through make sure all the log books are in shape of course but an important thing to look for is this adsb performance report make sure one of them uh, make sure it exists uh it should exist uh should end, end up with the flight manual supplement after the installation but uh i think it's something important to check because you could have an adsb output problem not know it and end up with a an airplane that's new to you and have to deal with this and who needs that right yeah i agree let the seller pay for it if there's an issue so that you save a few bucks yeah and uh you know we reached out to garmin to ask if there may be a circumstance where if, uh, if voltage is pulled off the airplane battery comes out or, or or whatever that this data could be wiped out of the transponder and they told us not very likely because the the configuration data is entered into the transponder and it's burned into uh in, into the uh 
the EEPROM. So internally, the the uh, data should be stored regardless of whether there's voltage pulled off the unit or not. But again, who knows what can happen? And as you said, it doesn't take much to get a report, and that's the thing. You should you should keep on top of it and uh, make sure your ADSB is working. Otherwise, you're going to be going through some some uh, some steps here to to get it resolved. Uh, uh, so one last thing, you know, you're a guy that that takes regulation seriously. Obviously, you're you're a professional pilot and you want to do the right thing. You filed a NASA report. Um, why? You know, the NASA report I filed because uh, one, once I started getting into to the deeper research of this and I found out my aircraft was on the no services list or the incel list, uh, that tells me that the FAA had tried to get in contact with me for 45 days and I hadn't gotten back to them. Um, and that could be the letter n never was received. It was sent out to the owner before me or something like that. So I just didn't know how long it had been going on. And knowing that I needed to do a deviation flight request, I just figured it was better to fess up, tell the FAA that I went flying, had no idea this was an issue. And um, it's not a get out of jail free card, but it's one of those like just kind of cover all your bases and say, hey, I learned about this. I'm going to get it fixed. Um, and hopefully nobody else will have the same issue. Well, you've been watching uh, Aviation Consumer Live uh, for uh, AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. I'm Larry Anglisano. Thanks a lot to uh, Cy Pinkert for an uh, interesting uh, field report here. Thank you.